Okay, so now let's play a bit. Okay, um, each of you has a data set and probably you come to this course with some particular interest. You know, plants of Egypt, herps of Ghana, right? Something that you're really excited about. And so what I'd like you to do is kind of work along in two steps. And along the way, as you make progress, share what you're doing and what, what's coming out of it with the rest of the group. So first thing I'd like you to do is take your country data and load those data into whatever database program or spreadsheet you have. If you have Microsoft Access, um, at least Adolfo and I will be most happy. But we can certainly work in Excel and we can certainly try our best in other platforms. Second of all, choose some particular taxon Try to make it something that isn't, you know, zero knowledge, because you'll just be bored. The whole world will be a gap. Um, and discard the other records. So if you're interested in, you know, birds of Kenya, throw away everything else. Throw away the other 100,000 records. And then start into some quality control. How many species names are in your taxon in that data set. For some groups, you can go to a, an authority list. So for example, for example, for birds, you can go to this site, Avabase, and they have uh, species lists for a bunch of countries, probably not all, but most. Um, and so, you could use that, you know, if you're wanting to look at the bird records from Rwanda, you can take what you get out of GBIF and test it for match against what you get out of these lists. This is not gonna be publication quality, it's gonna be exploration, okay? Um, and the other thing that you can do, let me go back to the PowerPoint. The other thing that you can do if you have a, um, um, if you have a GIS loaded on your computer, plot out those coordinates and let's see how dirty the coordinates are. See if they fall in your country or if they're falling on the other side of the world, perhaps. So let's just do that. That shouldn't take you huge amounts of time. If you're doing lichens, there probably won't be an authority list or a summary anywhere. But just get us an idea of the dimensions of your data set and some of the reductions. And what I'd like you to do is just kind of jot down some notes up here about it. So I, I did Kenya birds, right? I'll even, let's do this, put your initials as well. So. You know, I basically just gave you my notes. 107,000 bird records, 64 of them passed some, some cleaning steps, and 27,000 of them were georeferenced. Okay? So give us some information like that. How many species? How many records? So that's just kind of a first step. That can take you somewhere between 15 minutes and an hour. And then, there are a bunch of things you can do to start exploring your data. So as I said, you can, you can compare your list of species to some authority, but now with an eye to what are the gaps. Okay, not what's garbage, but what's left out. What's not on, not in your data set. Okay? So there's, there's kind of one interesting thing to do, looking, looking at how much of that known avifauna or known 
you know, herpetofauna or known flora, whatever, whatever you can find is represented in your data set. Um, you can take your data and count the frequency of records by year and look for gaps in time. And by similarly, you can count frequency by month and develop one of those radial charts, like Excel will do that. But see, if this, see how the sampling is distributed through the year. Okay, so that's up through there, that's pretty easy and it's not spatial. So if you don't have a GIS on your computer, you can certainly do that much. If you don't have a GIS on your computer and you want to go farther, then team up with somebody who does. We've got a fair amount of GIS ability around the table. How about if everybody who considers her or himself um, kind of reasonably capable, raise your hand. One. Kareem. We've got some GIS ability. Yeah. Others. No, everybody's like, oh, don't point at me, it's Dimby. Okay. Um, you can always just like walk and see who has a GIS booted up. And, but anyhow, if we get into groups of five or ten, that's fine. I just want you guys to see this process and be thinking about what the steps along the way are. So the spatial views are kind of here on down. Prepare a text file of latitude, longitude, and number of records. And plot it geographically, okay? The easy way to look at those gaps is just to show the number of records as the size of the symbol. If you're feeling really creative and artistic, try fitting a surface to it. But get yourself to that kind of density map. How many records across your country of your taxon? Okay? Now, if you want to go one step further, you can prefer, look at that, a text tile. How about a text file of latitude, longitude, number of records loaded into a GIS. Produce some random points over the same region. Extract the grid value to both sets of points for some climate data. and plot them in climatic dimensions. That's a little harder. Okay, some of you can do it really easily. Some of you probably don't know how to do it, but that's fine. Again, let's team up if you want to see that, okay? So essentially, all we want to do is generate some of these examples for some of your countries. You don't have to do it you don't have to do all the things up there. I think those of you who have some GIS experience and have the right programs on your computer can probably do all of them between now and five. Um, but please kind of share the process with your neighbor or with other people who are looking around for something interesting. And when you have one of these finished, Bring your computer up and let's look at it and talk about it as a group. So Kate, Adolfo, and I will circulate. Um, Rafael and Tiago can decide whether they are comfortable with these things. I'm sure they are. Uh, but feel free just to raise your hand when you run into a roadblock and one or more of us will confer converge over to lend you a hand. Any questions so far? Anybody having any problem getting to the data? And, which is to say, as a text file. Did everybody get it downloaded? Because I have copies on my computer probably faster than trying to download. The network's a bit slow here. If you can turn off the real network hogs on your computer, Skype, um, if you can turn off Dropbox, that'll make some of these things 
quite a bit easier. So just you know, turn it off. If you're really feeling generous, even turn off your wireless connection. And that way, those people who have to do some um, downloading for their analyses will be able to do it in less than an hour or two. Any questions?